And then we water it down with a soil treatment solution about two times in a one week uh, period. If your soil is really, really bad, then uh, you can do three times, but it's not necessary. We, we were uh, uh, <coughs> testing out. You didn't have to three times. Just uh, if you have a, uh, put a IMOs in your soil, you don't have to do, use a soil treatment three times. Two times is plenty. Also, without, uh, if you don't have a soil in your uh, land, just get, use a, a green waste. You put it on six inches, and then put a microorganism number four, and then you can put extra liquid number four, or uh, soil treatment solution, and let it sit one month and then you can plan it. Mm -hmm. And right before you plan, one week before, do the um, soil treatment solution or put a microorganism number four, liquefied ones. You will see the uh, sh mushrooms start growing and then you will see the uh, mycelium growing on uh, your green waste and that, that green waste became a soil so, in no time. So the six inches, yeah. you have to cover it? Oh no, you don't have to no, cover it. Uh, if, you know, the, like I live in a, uh, HPP, so I don't have a soil, you mm -hmm. know. So I just cut the grass short, and I just dump it on the uh, green waste, and, or wood chips, you know. And then there's no soil whatsoever, but the, I do the uh, fermentation on that uh, spot, you know, at least one month. And do not hurry, yeah, because, uh, um, fresh wood will take the um, nitrogen from the uh, <coughs> land, so you need to ferment the uh, green waste, and it will work beautifully. Okay, so after you uh, fill it up jar, and you cover with the brown sugar on top, So uh, when you use a plant, uh, green leaves, you need to do uh, pack it up to the top of the jar like this. But when you do the fermented fruit juice, it's the same method, but uh, you need to put extra sugar, but do not pack it up to top like this, because it, it has uh, lots of water, it's gonna push out. Mm -hmm. So it gives some space, at least, at least one third uh, space on top when you make fermented plant juice. Fermented plant juice you use for a uh, uh, later stage of the fruit <coughs> growth, yeah? So this is just an introductory <laughs> of a petrol farming. It's one of the easiest one you can start uh, making already. so the bulb doesn't try to go inside of the jar. And then, I always use a, a paper towel with a, what I use for ingredient, turn it this time, and the fermented plant juice, and then today is uh, April 19th, yeah? No. Oh, it's May. Oh, I'm, you're a month behind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I better change this. Uh, I had a string here, so hold oh, here. And then, uh, why did I put April? It's so crazy. <laughs> And then uh, one week later, you need a strain strainer, and then you pour everything, and then let it drip. 
yeah, and just uh, take out the only liquid, mm. yeah, and uh, and then <coughs> you scoop the liquid in the bottle, and then always write it down what it is, uh, what turnip and fermented plant juice. Because uh, fermented plant juice, uh, there's a three different kind you can make, right? For the um, like a mugwort or watercress for the healing, healing uh, uh, plant ingredients. So you you need to use like a, um, a soil treatment uh, beginning uh, farming, yeah, to prepare the soil. And then after storm, or you need to use those to heal the plants. Mm -hmm. And then, um, like a green fruit, small green fruit, or flowers for the flowering stage. So you need to put what you use on that uh, fermented plant juice, so you know when to use it. Also, fermented fruit juice is same. Thing, but you use for reproductive uh, fruiting the maturing stage when you start seeing the coloring mm -hmm. if you observe the fruit it's all green all of a sudden it starts showing the color you use a fermented fruit juice that time yeah uh, anybody has a question yes do you leave the jar in the light or the dark or does it matter oh all these uh, fermented uh, <coughs> Uh, stuff you need to store in uh, cool and the shady area. Yeah. If we get some light, that's okay. Yeah, some light is okay, not direct sun. Okay. But usually, uh, in Korea, we have a ceramic jar, and then that ceramic jar it breathes too. Mm. It has a glaze, but yeah. that yeah. Uh, jar is breathing. But the, we don't have it here. It, some store has it, but very expensive. So I use just glass jar, and then sometimes uh, when I uh, teach traveling, I cover whole thing with a uh, paper or something, and then carry. It. Uh, but then, when they ferment, do not move them around. Just uh, you know, find the spot cool and shady area, and then it will keep it long, long time. Yeah, and then. When it gets longer period, like an aged wine, it gets better and better. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's delicious too. Yes? Um, the, if you use sweet potatoes, do you only use the leaves or you cut the whole Well, plant? you can use a uh, uh, leaf or together. If you grow sweet potato or potato, mm -hmm. because it's a root crop, right? They have their own nutrients. So, um, Lots of time we um, ask the farmers to uh, make a fermented plant juice that from what they are growing, you know. And then when you grow tomato, you can um, pick all those uh, uh, lateral bud has a great uh, uh, hormone growth hormones. Also, it's their own plant. It's a has the right ingredient, right nutrient for that plant. But the citrus and the persimmon, um, those are only used for those those trees. They the other stuff they don't like it at all. So. Hmm. Yes. Yeah, I've uh, actually two questions. One is uh, I heard you say it's delicious. So uh, in drinking it, do you only want to do like drink an ounce or two, or is it okay to? I, if I drink it, I mix it with water. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. And what what's the the ratio with that? Like, like ten to one, twelve to one? Well, I pro I probably put one ounce for like a eight to sixteen ounce of water. Okay. Yeah. And uh, my other question is, uh, where I'm living and working now, a lot of mangoes are falling everywhere, and I'm wondering is. Uh, the mango fruit would be good to make this. Oh mango yes, mango. any fruit, uh, you know, you can make a fermented uh, plant juice. I have a Jawata Kava now. Uh, they usually give me once a year. Give me a fruit once a year. Now it's three times a year. I make a Jawata Kava fermented fruit juice. It's excellent. Mm -hmm. And then mango is excellent too. Actually, the tropical fruit you can mix three. 
like a papaya, mango, banana. That's really, really good. Have they used bananas or peels of bananas? Yeah, you use everything. Mm, okay. Yeah. And then, but the um, little cakey banana used for, used for the vegetative growth because it has a strong growth hormones and also has uh, lots of uh, potassium. So if you start like the leaves starting yellow or something that you could use, like that cakey banana tree? Uh, you mean the banana? No, it's not, it, a baby banana tree, and yeah. if the leaf starts to yellow, then it'd be good to use like in the tea. Because you, know, you want the, the banana tree to grow up, yeah. but if the leaf is going to die anyway, that's something... Oh, no, no, no. Don't use the uh, yellow one. Okay. Always fresh ones. Oh, okay, only... Yeah. Okay. Like, I don't know if you guys uh, make lays. When we make lays, we always pick the best part. The same... Uh, you know, idea. You want that living tissue, right? Yeah, it's all living, living thing. So, um, if you can pick the best time in the dark, I mean, in the early in the morning, with the morning dew is on, and then make it best time early in the morning. And then when you make this, um, all the input, you have to have a good thought, pleasant thought. Yeah, don't, don't grumble. It's uh, like Hawaiian, you know, they always uh, tell you that. And then it has a good energy into it. Yeah, and then you, you were surprised. I just spray, um, or oh, also spray, you spray late, late afternoon. No, uh, no strong sun. So after four, you spray it lightly, mist, yeah? And then, um, if you are sensitive to your plan, you will see next or two days later, your plan is perk. You, you will see that you have a plan as a energy. You know, I mean, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. And then also sick plants, when you start using a natural farming plan, they start recovering. Yeah, new leaves are healthy. And yeah, even though my friend has all these um, fruit trees and she, like a maggot around the wood area, whatnot, it was sick, sick, sick. So I said, take all this off. This all artificial stuff off. And then um, started, she was my student. So she was using all these inputs and spray and put microbes in the soil. Now it's all healthy. And they, they, they live uh, very close to the ocean too. When you spray, do you spray on the leaves or on the roots or where? Yeah, you can spray on the trunk and the leaves. Special leaves you need to spray under. But I spray everywhere. Oh. Uh, trunks and top of leaf, underneath the leaf. And I just carry my uh, four gallon sprayer and then I do one acre. Yes. Yeah, it's, it takes only maybe 45 minutes. So four gallons is enough to treat an acre? Yeah, I mean, I don't know how many uh, crops you have, but they, I use for uh, one, two, three, three vegetable bed, and then uh, all those uh, fruit trees. Anything else? Have you ever used Hanohono grass, the, the tips? Uh, no. I usually use that uh, I can eat. I don't really use for something that I... But the Hanohono grass, people say they can eat. You can eat the tips, yeah. yeah. So something you can eat, you can make a fermented plant juice. But they try to use a healing plant, like noni. It's excellent. Yeah. So you can spray that to a sick plant because noni really heal you. Yeah. Hmm. Like a uh, plant or animal is just like your body. The same thing. They just have a different life cycle. <coughs> and so this um, natural farming, um, you can use any elevation, any climate. You just adapt their, um, whatever they have in their uh, environment. But the just fermentation is, the basic idea is the same. It's very simple, really, really simple. Once you understand, um, we teach about uh, 25 to 30 hours class to 
teach you how to make uh, input, eight inputs, and then how to use it. And then um, you need to uh, learn uh, your plant's life cycle. And then um, the, when you grow stuff, grow what you want to eat. That's most easiest. You pick a plant that you want to eat. Yeah. So you don't want to make fermented plant juice out of anything that's not edible? Oh, uh, I haven't, but then some uh, people use, but I don't know. I don't know that I didn't test it, because all my input before I actually use on my crops, uh, one or two plants, I test it first mm. and see how it works. So I haven't tested that, the, like a poison plant, whatever. Right, right. Yeah. So. Try it. I don't know. You will kill the bug. Yeah. I don't even use the chili pepper water because the people have a problem with the bugs. But once I start using this natural farming, uh, I hardly have bugs. Mm -hmm. Really. Once in a while, I see slug, uh, white flies, the white stuff, the sticky stuff, and then black stuff, uh, like. Uh, Mm -hmm. I don't know what that is, but then you can treat it with uh, vinegar. The dilute with the vinegar and spray it, and the black stuff goes away. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Um, yeah, with, um, I, I'm not a scientist, so I don't know how it, this thing works. But the soil, um, that soil became alive. I was working with uh, some of the uh, scientists, and then we collect the data. In three months, I mean, it became a healthy, healthy soil. And then we grow like a soybean, and all the mushroom grows, and the earthworm came. So it, it avoid, try, to, if you can avoid the uh, chemical fertilizer. The chemical fertilizer somehow kills everything. That's why um, conventional farmers, some of them I work with, they stop farming in that uh, plot. They cannot farm no more. They add more chemical, more chemical. It didn't work, so they had to rest it and put ships in there, whatnot. But the natural farming on um, soil, it gets better and better and better, healthier. And the ugus of earthworm, you will see. And uh, you do less actually. Yeah and then life gets much easier. <laughs> yeah. It just really is. Yes? Um, when you were talking about using it, you were saying about using it together with the other types of um, inputs or in mm -hmm. the, uh, using them all together. So if you use it just by itself. Yeah, you, it works too. Okay. <coughs> yeah. Um, hmm. Yeah, you can use by itself. You will see the difference of the uh, um, energy of the plant. But, uh, yes? And when you use just the fermented plant juice and mm -hmm. not the whole combination. Mm -hmm. Yes, it, you can um, use uh, two, three, or one. Uh, but the best thing is we have a mixture formula, like a, a vegetative growth. A flowering stage and fruiting stage, and um, make a, a plant structure stronger. Sometimes a plant and get leaves gets really really big. That means it's over nitrogen, so they kind of lean. They need a better bone structure, so we give a water soluble calcium. Yeah, and you you can mix it in there, like a lactic acid bacteria. Uh, is really really important is it will help to tilt the soil and then uh, oxygen goes into the soil so, because they need, <coughs> need uh, lots of soil that's why you need all those creatures in the soil you know so they they can bring in the more oxygen to the uh, uh, to the plant also lactic acid bacteria make uh, your plant bigger and then um, make a skin, like a fruit, uh, make a flexible skin so it doesn't um, burst open. So if you uh, experience there's a lots of, uh, uh, like a 
daikon or potato, it, we have a heavy rain, it's starting to uh, open, break, yeah? Mm. So that, you, that will prevent that because it make uh, lactic acid, acid bacteria make the uh, plant skin uh, more flexible. Mm -hmm. What time is it? Quarter. Quarter after? I'm sorry, I have to go to other class. So, <laughs> <laughs> and then we are planning to give a natural farming class uh, this summer uh, here, um, probably uh, July whole month. Yeah.